in the 50s, there were a lot of characters, um, jungle characters that came out in the comic books. And, and this, I never did understand this, this concept, but you always had um, blonde, Af um, Caucasian jungle girls run around in, in a jungle that's dominated by you know, natives. And, and I never did get that concept. So Enten Benny, I think, is a, is a big step in another direction because here you have an, uh, an African-American, not an African-American, but an African, a Congolese warrior who is in her own element. And I think that plays well into the, you know, the concept of the story. And, uh, and, and the direction that I've got it going in. A lot of, from what I'm, I've been gathering the response from the editors and the assistant editors in Fort Wayne, there's a lot of adults that's, that are keeping uh, track of the strip. They're reading it more, than, more so than the kids are. And I got some feedback about, um, about a month ago at, a, at, a, at a, like a festival they had up there. And I had uh, a German lady from, uh, Manchester College come by and just buy up a bunch of stuff from my table because she just was knocked out that here was a, a female character doing her thing without having a, a, a sidekick, as a male sidekick, and she was, was just this character doing what she does best. And it, like I said, it's really a lot of people are tapping into that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any other work that you, that you want to uh, talk about? Renegade is a character I did. Uh, in 1987, and now he's starting to pick up some a little bit of steam. Um, I did a trade paper back in 07. It was like a, a, comb a compilation of all the work that I did that was unpublished of the character during the 90s, and it's actually uh, garnering something of a following. I had a few of the big pros that I grew up idolizing, like guys like Ron Friend, Sal Basuma, who took a liking to this. And the next issue I've got coming out next year will actually have uh, some of their talent involved in it. So I'm, I feel blessed to have legends who I grew up reading that's going to contribute to my uh, character. I think it's pretty cool. It is. Um, um, I just think the character has a very, uh, it has the potential, once we get it syndicated next year and getting it into some more papers, has the potential of being a really positive and lucrative character that could, you know, really take off. I mean, this could be something that the Hollywood could even pick up at, at uh, some point in time. Uh, how about her origin story? How about that? Her origin story. Her origin is she has a, uh, she had a father who was a great warrior, uh, who was part of an African tribe, and he taught her the ways of warrior combat. Uh, what happened was he was killed in a battle with another rival tribe. And because of that, because of the loss of her father, it turned her into a, 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 something of a rebel. And so from there, she left her village to basically do her own thing. I mean, just kind of find herself, more or less. And in finding herself, she runs across different misadventures that get her in hot water. And she has to use her resources, her, her, her abilities, and, and, and her her skills at combat to get herself out of these situations. I want to tell you one thing about, about the comic book industry. Once you're in it and you're publishing on your own or even if you're working for another company and you can even ask a lot of the professionals, they don't follow things as closely as you might think they do because they're so busy drawing and trying to keep things going and, and create and get pages done and meeting time uh, deadlines that they don't always keep up with what's current and sometimes what's even not current because they're, they're on it, trying to get their stuff done. And that's what I was doing, the same thing. So I'm, I didn't always follow Milestone. During the time I was doing a lot of stuff I was working on, I was following guys like maybe Mike Mignola was doing Hellboy, you know, people that, that have a certain, certain kind of niche that, that caught my attention and caught my eye. But it's a good thing. I mean, I mean don't get me wrong. It's good to see you know, African Americans working in this industry because Lord knows if you go back about maybe 15, 20 years, there are very few people. I can, you can almost hand name people like Keith Pillard, Ron Wilson, um, George Perez. You know, he's, he's, you, you have just a handful of people. Now you've got a lot of them, but still not that many of them in the mainstream.